All right, so that last video was pretty boring. Uh, it's time to get into some of the actual, like, really cool stuff that C++ can do compared to C. Um, if you have been writing a lot of C code and only C, which is kind of rare before going into this video, then you will find some of the limitations of the stuff that, I was, that I'm about to cover being lifted is just really awesome. So let's talk about function overloading. You'll also notice that, you know, I'm only using printf and standard io.h instead of iostream, which is kind of one of the first things everyone tries to teach you about C++. And I think that's just bogus. Um, I think C out and iostream are very confusing until you learn how they work. So I'm not going to actually cover C out until later when I cover the mechanism behind how C out works. And then I'm going to introduce it. So deal with it. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with function overloading here. So as you guys know, you can declare functions all you want at the top of a file or in a header file and then call them. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a function here and give you the name of the function. And then I'm just going to basically um, call it from main. So there's a function. Now you probably can guess um, in C what would happen is if you, could, if you gave a function with the exact same name in C but maybe made it take an argument instead, um, in C, this would give you an, a linker error and basically say, hey, you already used the function name func1. What the hell are you doing? You can't do that twice. So if you tried to do something like this in C, it would give you an error. However, in C++, there's a mechanism called function overloading, sometimes just overloading in general, where you basically can overload the name func1 to being multiple things and let the compiler determine which one you were calling based off of the arguments. So this will actually compile and run. Um, that was stupid. I didn't provide x as an argument to printf. So this basically allows me to determine that because I called func1 with no arguments, um, it was able to determine that I wanted to call the one up here. Now if I was to call func1 again with an argument of say 0, it'll determine that I wanted to call this one, the overloaded second one, based off of the second argument. So that, in short, is, is what function overloading provides for you. And it can be very awesome because sometimes this function might be something very complicated and you want to determine, based off of the arguments you're passing, what you want to do with it. A very awesome example with this, of this would be, as you guys know, printf is kind of annoying in the sense that um, you have to in advance know the type of the variable being passed. So for example, if you want to print out an int, you have to put percent %d here, but if it was a float, you'd have to put something like percent %g. So if I wanted to implement something kind of useful and basically have a function called print... So this is um, an early way in C++ or, or, or a simplified way of allowing the language in the compiler to determine what you want to do based off of the type you're passing in. So if I just basically say print a floating point value, it knows that I wanted to pass the one that took the float in, and it ends up here. If you need further proof, I could just put an f after this, so you know it ended up here. If I wanted to go ahead and print a string, it ends up in the one that takes the string. So this is operator overloading, and this is something never would have worked in C, and it's very awesome in C++ because, like I said, you don't have to change the name of this function based off of the arguments you're passing in. You can just let the compiler determine that, which is really awesome. So let me try to come up with something completely on the fly that's probably going to be a mistake. Um, this is as far as I've planned this video, but you know me. I like to not plan. I'm going to go ahead and pull up one of these wild um, examples. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at, say, SDL event loop, pull that in. This is one of my code snippets that comes with Espresso C. So here's my, um, there we go. So suppose I wanted to add a function here called draw. Yeah, I'll put it up here, right above do render. This could be called draw, right? Here comes draw to the rescue. Um, what draw is basically going to do is I'm going to call it right here where I was drawing the rectangle and I'm going to put the, the draw call to draw the rectangle right inside here. So this is basically the function that says draw the man based off of the pointer of the man, right? And there he goes. Suppose I was crazy enough to add something else. Remember, this is rapid prototyping here, so I'm just kind of coming up with something a little bit um, 
off the wall as, as, as a quick test to show you guys what operator or function overloading can accomplish. So suppose I had something called enemy in my game. An enemy basically has the same properties as man, but he's a completely different object. Well, if I wanted to draw the man, and I have a function called draw that draws the man, suppose I wanted to have a completely separate one that drew the enemy instead. And suppose when I'm drawing the man, I want him to appear white. I suppose it's using a bitmap or something to display that he's, of course, the man. And I'm drawing the enemy, I want him to appear red. Red, green, blue. Well, how can I determine which one I want to draw if I have the function name draw? The idea is the pointer or the last argument of the function should automatically be able to tell. So right now I haven't really changed anything. Maybe the enemy will be smaller too. So I haven't changed anything, so right now I'm drawing man, which is basically the white rectangle. But if I wanted to create another object in here, just on the fly, called enemy, I'm just going to declare the enemy up here. Enemy E equals, and he'll be at position 2020. And I want to draw the enemy right after I draw the man. Well, what I can do is I could just call draw again and pass in the argument of the enemy, which is E. And it should basically know, there we go, that the second function call, I want to draw the enemy instead. And I can take a completely different code path based off just the argument that I passed into the function. I actually think that's pretty cool. So that's the more um, complicated example of operator, or sorry, function overloading in C++. And as you can see, um, the potential for the kind of code you can write as a result of this is, is very, very awesome and very high. I'm